Fireball! Smack! Alright, today we're going to be looking at uh, an issue um, uh, that is typically understood as heresy called modalism. And what's kind of sparked this interest is that in independent fundamental uh, Baptist circles, usually the newer contemporary types, um, there is now a stir of the denial of the Trinity for modalism. And I think this really kind of got kick-started uh, with the old Pentecostals, uh, specifically uh, the Oneness Pentecostals and probably some Holiness people. Um, Basically, I think that it's uh, based on a uh, severe mistrust of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church should be severely mistrusted, which is why this becomes an issue, because they say, well, the Trinity is from Catholicism. Ergo, <laughs> uh, anything associated with Catholicism is bad, and yada, yada, yada. In logic, we call this the uh, genetic fallacy. Some things like this, therefore it's wrong by association. You think about uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan, where Jesus shows that even though the good guys were supposed to be the Levite and the Jewish priest, as it turns out, the hero is the usual villain thought, you know, the, uh, the Samaritan, and the Samaritan does the good deed. So, we cannot judge somebody simply by saying, you're like them, you know. Even if they have likenesses, doesn't mean that God's going to judge them uh, the same. He's going to judge them individually. I should have got a drink on it. This. <laughs> but, uh, basically, uh, so this has made a comeback, and recently I saw some videos from a channel called Lies the Devil. The guy who runs the channel is a guy named Theodore. Theodore is a Kent Hovind reject. And when I say that, I mean that he got rejected by Kent Hovind. <laughs> um, he was basically, Kent Hovind gets out of jail finally after years. I have been personally involved, uh, interviewed him on this uh, channel. And basically, I uh, got to meet some of the people who were working with Kent at the time. And I'll be honest with you, uh, there was some temptation. Hey, go down to Alabama and we'll start up a good thing together. But um, I decided not to get myself involved in that. Uh, because I knew I was a preacher. I knew God had given me my own vision. And I really didn't want to play tag along. And so uh, that's what I decided to do. Theodore, on the other hand, went all ka on it. So he became his producer, and Kent needed a producer. Um, probably was okay. I don't think he was as good as uh, Eric Hoven. Uh, Eric Hoven is a really good producer. The problem is, is he's <laughs> usually doing the stuff that you know doesn't, man doesn't demand a producer because he had a falling out with Kent. That Kent was at his best with Eric. Uh, they had two gifts that worked together good. Um, but, hey, you know, stuff happens. I feel sympathetic towards Dr. Hoven as far as that stuff goes. But um, I don't see him as infallible. I don't see any man or any man's writings as infallible. And I don't think that he would expect me to be any different. I think he's of a similar mindset. Uh, the thing that gets Kent in trouble sometimes is a strong point, and that is to have an opinion on everything. But nevertheless, um, Theodore, you know, I don't know what happened. Maybe Kent farted too hard and, you know, it stank up. So Theodore's like, I'm out of here. And they started getting into all this personal issue stuff. And I, I really have a disgust for all that kind of stuff, period. Um, 
you know, there's plenty of stuff to argue over. You don't have to argue over stupid things. But nevertheless, uh, I, I did notice that he had a section on his YouTube channel that was uh, dealing with um, oh, what was it? dealing with the Trinity, where he started attacking the Trinity for modalism. And um, yeah, in the Catholic Church, that's an easy heresy. And biblically, the Bible teaches the Trinity. I don't say that to say the Catholic Church is 100% accurate on it. I will be doing a debate where there's a slight aspect of the Nicene Creed that deals with eternal generation. And I believe that it's wrong, and I'm going to debate that it's wrong. But the gist of it, one God, three persons, that simplicity is correct. So much so that I don't I don't say that the Catholics are not Trinitarian. But um, Theodore and other places, uh, he gives some historical arguments, some which are terrible. He um, talks about how the Trinity is this merging of paganism with Christianity. And then he assumes that uh, Tertullian must have been merged into paganism. Tertullian, uh, the uh, pastor from North Africa, was alienated from the Catholic Church, which was very early on, 150 years before uh, Council Nicene. And uh, he did hold to a trinity, but, you know, one of the most famous quotes that you'll ever get from Tertullian was, What hath Athens to do with Jerusalem? Which means... I don't want anything associated with paganism in my doctrine. So, <laughs> so you're really kind of uh, reaching for the stars there, but, you know, basically, let's go ahead and just take some time to go through some text. Um, the first one, I'm going to be using the Torah, Jewish Publication Society. So, in other words, these are Jews who translated the scriptures of the um, Masoretic text. Therefore, they're not Trinitarian. I'm going to read Genesis 1. Alright, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle and over all the earth and every living creature that come upon the earth so he's speaking to other persons and this is explained in linguistics that Elohim is plural so the Elohim could be multiple gods it's just the way the word was always used. It's a very universal term for God. But um, when we look at that, it goes a little bit deeper. Uh, verse 27. And God created man in his own image. Once again, God, Elohim, created man in his own image. In the image of, oh yeah, own image. It's my own image. Now, if this is not multiple persons of God, then it would be angels. But then if it was angels, it wouldn't be God's own image. Okay. When it says, uh, in the image of God created he him, male and female, he created them. So, and that's kind of interesting, because now there's a plurality with humanity, too, and a plurality with God, and so they parallel in that, because it's male and female, multiple persons. Alright, so, that is to start off all scripture. It's Genesis 1. All right, giving us clues. It also says earlier in the chapter, Spirit of God hovereth across the waters. 
And then he talks about the image of God, and Colossians says that Jesus is the image of God. Now, let's uh, hit a couple little spots here. You know, sometimes the best thing to do is not to go for the obvious. Because if it's not obvious, then whatever point it makes is more objective. Because it wasn't part of agenda, it was just the assumption of the worldview. It's the presupposition. And he says, um, this is Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. So he's talking to God. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. And then now uh, we go to Psalm 110. All right. The Jehovah, the Lord, said unto my Lord Adonai, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies a footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Yeah, I guess I'll stop there. So, uh, this is King David, okay? So if he's king, he is the absolute sovereign of whatever land he rules. And he says, the Lord, so Jehovah, we're thinking God, said unto my Lord, Adonai. Well, who's his Adonai? Alright, because isn't God supposed to be his Adonai? But God is talking to his Adonai. That's, that kind of sounds to me like he's talking to Christ. He says, um, Joel 228. All right, Joel. It says, um, And it shall come to pass afterward that I, that be God, will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants, upon the handmaids, in those days I will pour out my spirit. So, here God's sending out the Spirit, and the Spirit is teaching or communicating. So, once again, he's sending. So, he that's sending is a person. And then it's going out there. Now, let me uh, hit a proof text that is being used by Theodore. If I can find it. If I can turn back pages. Good.
I better skip that one. I don't want to waste all my time on it. So. Would have been good. I'll probably have to do a separate video. Matthew 3. Alright, um, 3.16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God ascending like a dove and lightning upon him. Verse 17, And lo, a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So, here's Jesus. Here's the Holy Spirit coming down here. And then, oh, back up in heaven, there is the Father speaking. This is my Son, whom I will please. Now, if there is only one person of God, then that would kind of say that Jesus is being adopted and that Jesus is a separate, ser separate servant or a separate person. So you got the deity side, which is of a, one person, and Jesus, which is another. But the Jesus, which is another, would not be really God. Because there's only one person to God. If not, then what's he talking about? Or did Jesus become a God? And that throws out a whole pagan ball of worms. That modalists have to deal with. No, you got three different activities. And he gets hung up on person. But what these guys have to realize is how often does God call himself a person? Now, typically, the best way to handle this is that we have God as in the Godhead or the substance of God. But also, if we have God in a personal title then we would say that that God in the personal title is the same as the person of the Father. And I'm uh, preaching on this soon, so I figured I'd throw it in there. Luke 12. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you into the synagogue... Okay. Well, it says in verse 12, uh, For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. But why is it that the Son is different from the Holy Ghost because if they're the same person then it should apply the same well basically the Holy Spirit is a different person and that different person has a different duty 
and he is to draw men. Well, they cannot be drawn of God if the Holy Spirit is not the picture. In uh, Romans 8, It says, uh, verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we ought... Sorry. We, will, we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So now the Spirit is doing something to get you to God, to get your prayers to God, but that would mean the Spirit is separate from God. And finally, let's look at 1 John 5. And here, once again, his defense is to speak of persons. Well, what we're doing is uh, theology. And when you're dealing with theology, it's okay to have philosophical categories. It's okay to use a different word. It's just that that word should be pretty much equivalent with the idea. So, 1 John 5. Starting at uh, verse 6, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water, but by water and blood. All right, the water is baptism, the blood is his sacrifice on the cross. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. So you're born again, the Spirit bears witness. Verse 8. Oh, hold on. Verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. If there is only one person, then are they three beings? See, this is the problem. You have to deal with the text. Okay? A lot of these cults, a lot of these theologies want to be separate and have their own terms and their own logic. But then once they get in the scripture, the problem is, if they don't match with the scripture, they should be tossed out. So it says, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So what's the three? Three persons. Was the one one body. And there are three that bear witness in earth the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. There's an activity there. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Men, plural. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not, God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave his Son. So, one thing that you have to understand is that the Trinity helps to build up Jesus Christ. You can understand how God and the Holy Spirit are working when you understand the Father is sustaining everything. And when you see these interactions, then it all kind of makes sense. You know, why does the Holy Spirit have to take that message up? Because there's one, two, three persons. And uh, is this something essential for salvation? I don't know. 
I do know that this is something fundamental and therefore um, you know yes uh, Theodore um, Steve Anderson was right to fire his uh, buddy there who proclaimed modalism you know why because they got to get God right and as a teacher you need to get God right so that you can bring people to God because what happens is that once you get those lower levels well then people can fall for anything because they're not grounded the only way you get grounded is know the Bible and know the God that you're talking about you can make up a conspiracy theory about how well this is the reason why this is the reason why aliens did it Jesuits did it okay yeah lots of people do that stuff I believe in conspiracies too but I do not think according to conspiracy so you can make up an excuse but you have to deal with the facts and the facts are in the scripture and the scripture does not teach um, one person God it shows three persons it might focus on one and the father but that is irrelevant so, you know, basically, I encourage anybody, anybody want to interact with me on this one, go ahead and we'll go back and forth, kind of go over some scriptures. All right, catch you later.